So what's the boat hook for? So where are you going with that lot? Well, um, we're uh, getting ready to go off and once again I'm on the hunt for gas! One of the things I wanted was to get fit and uh, in sailing there's lots and lots of ways in which you get fit. Currently the way to get fit is I'm on the hunt for gas. Anyway the gas here is, um, at least I know where the gas is, it's in a place call, um, called Andy Stores and that's off at Jordanstown. Monkstown. Right. Monkstown. Please don't confuse them, they're half a mile apart. <laughs> okay, so I've got to get to Monkstown. Luckily the driver knows where the hell I'm going because I don't. Well, fingers crossed, uh, Bev and I are going to be uh, going out tomorrow and we're going to go over to Scotland. Uh, so uh, Beverly has got me looking for diamonds um, because what you have is um, uh, you can have uh, tidal atlases like this one that we have which is as donkey's age and it's got you the, the flows um, which is quite good um, in the back of um, this is the Irish Sea Pilot you also have uh, flows, but it doesn't give you much. Gives you the numbers, uh, but doesn't give you the detail as much detail as the one I've just shown you. Uh, but this is in the back of the Irish Sea Pilot. We've also got them in uh, Reed, so you can get these uh, tidal flows from quite a few places. But the other place. Here's Tidal Diamonds and that's why Bev's just had me looking for Tidal Diamonds. Now unfortunately the only place that we have got some Tidal Diamonds for where we're going is um, just here off um, Island McGee which is at the bottom of the track and just here at um, the bottom of the peninsula and you've got absolutely nothing in the middle um, as to where you're going so the word guess as always comes to mind okay so what Bev and I find is the easiest of finding the diamonds is um, to get one of these uh, to look find your tidal information that comes with your charts and um, Chart 2 was the best uh, chart to look in for it. So these are the tidal diamonds that are relate to it. And they've got letters. And the main thing it's got is positions. And we just find it a lot easier to, to get the position and then find the diamonds. It just works easier for us. If you're using um, a chart plotter, uh, which most people will be, um, you can also find these tidal diamonds uh, on your chart plotter. We're just going to use our old one here. Um, and they're marked as C. C for current. So what Bev's doing at the moment is giving Salty Sausage a little clean on her bottom. Um, if you leave her in the water for any length of time, she gets... Um, like a fine grit it is and we just think it's the start of barnacles anyway and that's what she's doing and I am going to clean the fenders that she rests on because um, she's um, getting marks from the fenders that um, she just rests on so I'm going to clean those well I don't know about you but that is one grubby fender let's get it clean Look cleaner. And Bev's just putting the uh, 
Getting the bridle ready for sausage. Getting the bridle ready. <sighs> but all these little jobs, they just take time and in boating life, they always, what's, what's the town, Trebevilly? Oh, it's long as you think. Any chance of saying that to camera? It always takes longer than you think. Not that bloody close, but never mind. Orographic cloud, you tend to get them on the tops of uh, hills and cliffs and mountains and things like that. It looks orographic, it could just be fog that's spilling off the top. Um, we're not going to be close enough to find out. But the weather forecast has been completely wrong as usual. Um, the other day it said that this would be barely sailable, last night it said it would be comfortably sailable, and today it's gusting like there's no tomorrow. And to be quite honest, um, for my first time at sea in a while, um, we did go down to Strangford, you know. It was weeks ago. Um, <laughs> I just rather it was just a wee bit more comfortable today. You know, we're, we're, we've got the wind quite close to uh, dead behind us, and that's never a comfortable point to sail. Um, I mean, it's not quite close behind us, but it's certainly on the rear quarter, and we need to veer a little bit more north, which means it will be close behind us. But when we do that, we will probably put the engine on, drop the mainsail, and just run under the jenny, because the main, with the wind dead behind you, it's just too dangerous. But all these white caps weren't supposed to be here, but they've turned up and we're in the middle of them, so it's going to make for interesting times. Well, Bev had me um, uh, looking for uh, tidal diamonds um, yesterday as part of our passage plan, and this is roughly the location of one of the tidal diamonds I found, which is just off uh, Clog and Jetty. Um, and then all, all in the middle of the North Channel, there's absolutely no diamonds. So we had to guess our um, tide, what tide, tidal assist we were going to get, and also its direction. When we entered the North Channel, the wind, which had been forecast to be southerly, force 3 or 4, turned out to be coming from the north, and it was more like force 6 becoming 7. The sea started turning very unpleasant and we decided to go to one of our alternates, Larn Loch. Well, when we were out um, in um, the North Channel, and um, we were seeing four seven um, on on the <laughs> on, on the gusts on the gusts. Um, we uh, decided that we would uh, use one of our alternates, and this is the good thing about having an alternate place to go because um, when you see when we saw four seven, we just thought no, go to the alternate. It's only two nautical miles away and you know you're sorted you're not having to sort of think so always having that preparation um beforehand is really good um so we're in lawn lock and this time we decided that we would anchor rather than um uh use the mooring ball and i have to say i think the anchorage is a lot better uh, it was lovely last time when we came because we were given a free mooring ball but realistically the anchorage is in a better position um, you're just not going to have um, uh, stuff coming down the um... water has to make a twist and a turn to get here yeah uh, and therefore it's just uh, much calmer 
um, on, on, you know, so you're not going to get the you're waves. You're also a bit further away from the car ferries, aren't you? Yeah, because when we were here, it, we we christened that tide that one rock and roll because we were sort of like we had the car ferries going. We had um, there was a lot of um, waves coming in from the um, uh, the North Channel, so it was very bouncy. Whereas here at the anchorage, it's very flat. But it's a bit of a tricky anchorage to do because you have to um, be inside of a yellow li a line, um, which is basically the gas pipe. Um, so, which is why we're very close to this um, power line here, um, just so that um, that that was a, a safe area. But it's lovely, actually, isn't it, Bev? It's a lovely little spot. Yeah. Not going to be anywhere near as bouncy as uh, when we were here last. Well, we can certainly hope. So what's the boat hook for? <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> oh God! Look at this. Oh my word! <laughs> Good oh. God! Yeah, well, I don't want that coming up onto salty lass. To be honest. I'm wondering what else is under <laughs> salty lass was stuck to the keel. I can't tell you what's stuck to the keel. Do you I'm mind not... you seriously bent the boat hook with that? <laughs> Dump it in the water! There, got that rid of that. <laughs> I'll go make sure it goes past. Oh god. Definitely smooth this morning. Uh, none of this slight, looking more like a storm. No wind either. No wind either, which is a bit of a shame because Bev and I do like um, sailing. Uh, however, we should be able to uh, do our passage, and I think that anchorage last night was really pleasant. Really, I enjoyed it. <laughs> oh. Bev and I are um, watching uh, a really big pod of uh, dolphins and um, when we see dolphins, especially on the starboard, I can't help but singing our little song. Got quite a few there. Hang on. Ooh. No idea if I've got this lot in focus. I know, it's very difficult. I'm just pointing in the general direction. <laughs> you just have to wave, don't you? You do. But it's a nice little pod. got to our destination of uh, Lamb Lash and I'm really glad to say that it's a lot nicer than last time we were here. Last time we did a blog called Lashing in Lamb Lash because it was just pouring it down but now we can show you Lamb Lash in a much nicer light. You know Holy Island, I can actually see Holy Island 
and um, you know, and I can actually see lamlash as well rather than just rain. And we uh, think, and we think we saw the monk's cave. Yes, we did. Uh, we didn't uh, manage to take any footage of that just purely because it was quite a distance off. Um, but yeah, there's um, paintings on the um, on stones in around the area where the uh, monk's cave was uh, is, should I say? But um, but Lamlash just looks lovely, and I'm I think I'm hoping for another nice quiet night, but this time we're on a mooring ball. Yeah, ten pound it's a bargain. It is so it's ten pounds um, for a mooring ball here, so. You know, but there is some anchorages as well, so it's up to you what you want to do.